from heaven. If the pride is there and the pride is not touched and the pride is not, the proud heart is not subdued, that that's what had in his heart. Whatever he hears, whatever he sees, he'll say, I don't believe that. God can give him a dream or vision or a direct teaching like this. We'll come to the Bible study and the Lord teaches us everything. If the person can hear every syllable and every word and every sentence and everything that he said, and he still say, whatever they say, I have my goal. I have my plans. I have my objective. And I'm still going to achieve what I want to achieve until God deals with something such a man, such a woman, such a boy, and such a girl, such a youth. Because pride hardens the heart and doesn't allow people to submit themselves before the Lord. It says his heart was lifted up and his mind was hardened in pride. He was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. In verse 21, and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beasts and the dwelling and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Whomsoever he will. What's that telling us? It's saying that in the mind of God, it's not, listen to this, it's not democracy. That's why and you don't vote for leaders in the church. That's why you don't say, now, who is going to be the overseer in this state? Let us vote. No, he appointed whomsoever he will. Who is going to take care in this district or in this, uh, in this group or in this region? Let's vote. No. That God is the one that truly over all. And it says, He appointed over it whomsoever He will. And you know, when God has done that, there are times that somebody will say, in His own heart, this is one of all people that they put there to be our overseer. This one of all people they put there to be our leader. I am better than Him. I know when He was converted, I know when He came to this church, I was the one being the follow up. I know when I taught in the basic fundamental doctrines of the Bible. And here it is. Now look at, look at this kind of system. And they put this man there. I am better. How do you know you are better? How do you know you are better? Is it the knowledge of the head? You are higher than God. You see more than God. You know more than God. And you know who ought to be there. You ought to be there. God has made a mistake. You should have been there. He should not have been there. It says over here that God ruled in the kingdom of men. And that he appointed over that kingdom whomsoever he will. And thou his son, Belshazzar, that has not humbled thine heart, though Thou knewest all this. You knew all this, but you had in yourself. And then you went to take the vessels of the house of the Lord and then to be drinking wine with that. You're hiding yourself in pride. What's the consequence of that? Proverbs chapter 8, 16. In Proverbs chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 18. Proverbs chapter 16. We're looking at verse 18. Pride goes before what? Before destruction and and haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be an humble spirit, to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil of the proud. It's telling us there there's punishment for those who are proud. In Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. We're reading from verse sixteen. Second Chronicles chapter twenty six. And we're reading from verse sixteen. It says, But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. When he was strong, when he was a child, a babe. A newcomer, when he was just a house fellowship leader, and when he was just weak, when he had nothing, he had no job, when we were all helping him in the district, have this, have this, that time was humble. But now when he became strong, 
It says it was when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. What's that? He was a king. And then the priests had their duty and responsibility. And eventually he became so proud and lifted up, he felt his royal assignment was not enough. And he must now take what, people, what he has not been given. These are pertinent to the priests of God, but I can do it too. What do they know that I don't know? What do they have that I don't have? They carry that sense of incense where they have at hand too. And then they walk to the place with their feet. I have feet too. And this is what they say when they offer the incense. I can say that too. I know what they know. I can do what they can do. That's the pride. Stay where God has put you. And do not usurp another person's, another, another leader's responsibility. Over here we're told about this man. And then in verse 17, And Azariah the priest went in after him. And, and we see first call, that's 80 priests of the Lord, that were valiant men. And they were to desire the king and said unto him, it appertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests of the, the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall lead be for thine honor for the, from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth. He was angry. There are people like that. They cannot bear correction. Pride will not allow that. They cannot bear a brother who shouldn't have been there. Sister shouldn't have been there. It's not your office. It's not your right. My brother, you shouldn't be controlling a coordinator. This is area. This is a good coordinator. This is his responsibility. How is it that you are usurping his authority and position? And now you are the one controlling, controlling the district. That's not your position. They become angry. Why are they talking to me like that? My position is so important. I must control everything, whether I am coordinator or not. Group coordinator or not. That's just title. That's just church. I gave them that. I know my value. I know what I should have been. I am the one that chose this position for myself. It's, I could have been a coordinator. I could have been an overseer. Hey. You're playing with church mates. This is the house of God. And the judgment comes in various ways. You cannot predict how the judgment will come. And Uzziah was wroth and had his censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth, while he was angry with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord. And from beside the incense altar, and Nazariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, he himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had no what? Smiting him. It was the smiting of the Lord. You know, Azariah, he, he even could not smite him. How could Azariah do that? And all the priests, they were powerless. They just came to him and said, Our king, you shouldn't be doing this. They couldn't discipline the man. And God smote him. You know something? And there are some people that carry themselves in such a way. And they say, touch me if you can. Coordinator, touch me if you can. Group coordinator, touch me if you can. Region of Asia, discipline me if you can. State of Asia, try it. And let's see, let's scatter the church on your head. Hey, the state of Asia may not be able to touch you. There is a hand in heaven. And God smote him. You want to miss heaven because of this little sin? You want to miss the glory of eternity because of this little sin? Get on your knees and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And do not allow the anger and the wrath of God to smite you to the ground. And then for you to die under that judgment of God. God hates pride. And he deals with it in a very serious way. Look at verse 21. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death. The Discipline upon him continued until the day of his death. 
where then will he be spending eternity now? Think about that. Somebody who, who died under the wrath and the anger and the judgment of God and the divine discipline was not reversed, was not lifted until he died because of pride. Because of pride. The punishment and the perdition of the proud. We're looking at Numbers Numbers chapter 16. In Numbers chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 8. Numbers chapter 16, verse 8. Here we find pride in manifestation. And let's see what, what the pride did to them. In Numbers chapter 16, we're looking at verse 8. And Moses said unto Korah, Hear, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, Seemeth it a small sin unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, and all your people following after you. Oh, don't you think, shouldn't you be grateful to God? God has raised you up and has brought you near to serve in the tabernacle. In verse 10, and he has brought thee, he has brought thee near to him. And all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, was thee. And seek ye the priesthood also. The one you got, you didn't campaign for that. The one you got, you did, nobody voted you in for that. This is just the free grace of God and the provision of God. If you have got this step and this one without any campaign and without any maneuvering and without any, any political trick, if you got it just simple like this, why don't you just rest in the Lord and let the Lord do whatever He wants to do. He wants to give you anything higher. Why do we have to now use this cunning method, crafty method, political method, so that we can have what the Lord has not given us? And seek ye the priesthood also, in verse 11, For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord? And what is Aaron, and that ye murmur against him? And Moses said to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and which said, We will not come up. Moses, stay where you are. Limit yourself. And don't ever send any message to me that I shall come. You have your place, I have my place. Your position, I have my position. We will not come. You see that kind of pride? And who did God use to deliver all these children of Israel out of Egypt? Moses. Who did God use to bring the law on those two tables of stone to the children of Israel? Moses. Who did God use to establish the priesthood? Moses. Who did God use to bring all the Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, all the priests, and then give them all their various responsibilities? God used Moses. And Moses said, now, can you come? Let's settle this problem. Let's talk about this is terrible. This should not be taking place in the midst of the children of God. Let's talk about this. And he said, go back and tell him we will not come. Is it a small sin in verse 13 that thou hast brought us up out of a land that flew with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness except thou make thyself all together a prince over us? Think about that. They were accusing Moses now. You're making yourself a prince over us. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Can I correct the mistake you're making? When God called Moses, Moses said, No, I'm a stammerer. I cannot do it. Choose another person. He didn't make himself a prince over them. But that's what he said in their pride. Moreover, thou hast brought unto us, not brought us into the land that flowed with milk and honey, and gi or giving us inheritance of the fields and the vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? Will we will not come up? That that was a serious sin. And you see the manifestation of pride. It begins in the heart. We're looking at verse 28. We're talking about the punishment and the perdition of the proud. The people are so proud, so pompous, they regard nobody. They will not answer anybody. They are there and there is nobody compared with them. And Moses could not touch them. Moses could not do anything because they, we don't even accept your authority, your leadership. 
You're making yourself a prince over us. The Lord has not put you there. We want to tell you that we don't accept your leadership. And it's all pride. What's the result of that? Verse 28. And Moses said, Hereby shall you know that the Lord has sent me. Hereby shall you know. I didn't put myself here. Hereby shall you know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, a strange punishment, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into to the people, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all his goods. And they and all that appertained unto them went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. I pray God will deliver us from the consequence of pride. That we will remain in the Lord, and remain depending upon the Lord, and serving the Lord. And will not allow the judgment that comes upon the proud to come upon us in Jesus' name. Nebuchadnezzar, the proud king, was abased and humbled before God. He himself later confessed and said, And those that walk in pride is able to abase the humiliation of so great an emperor in the sight of the whole world. Both the Jews whom he had brought low, and of the Babylonians who were inclined to make an idol of him. That humiliation was in itself a great example of God's power and authority over men, over all men. It's a powerful reminder that God is the judge of all men. The punishment shall awaken us and make us conscious of the hatefulness of the sin of pride. Any soul defiled by the sin of pride, arrogance, and self-seeking must expect the heavy hand of divine judgment to fall upon him. He who walks in pride or sets himself up, his own will up, his own pleasure above the will and above the pleasure of God will eventually be abased and humiliated in the sight of men, in the sight of angels too. The word of God tells us that the lofty, the independent spirit of self-important man who will not for one moment allow that all he is and all he has and all he can do belongs to God, that lofty, haughty spirit will be severely revealed by God. God has said it and what he has said he will surely accomplish. Pride is infinitely hateful unto God. There is in pride that which assaults God, that which rejects God, and that which dethrones God. Pride is destructive to the soul, for no proud or subdued spirit can ever see God. And let's look at Psalm 101, Psalm 101. See God's attitude, God's judgment of pride. Psalm 101, I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 101, verse 5. Whoso privilege slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart, I will not suffer, I will not allow, I will not permit in my presence. Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 21. Psalm 119, verse 21 says, Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed. The curse of the Lord is upon the proud, which do err from thy commandment. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 16. We're looking at verse 5. You see how God deals with the proud. In uh, Proverbs 16, verse 5, everyone, how many people? Tell me out loud. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. His punishment, his judgment is sure and certain. Isaiah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 12. 
For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, he shall be brought low. Every one lifted up shall be brought low. Isaiah chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11, I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Isaiah chapter 23, verse 9. Isaiah 23, verse 9. The Lord of hosts has purposed, has purposed it to stain the pride of all glory and to bring into contempt all the honorable men of the earth. You see then the judgment of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. Malachi chapter 4, verse 1. All over, all through the Bible, we find the judgment of God coming upon the people that are proud. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. For behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Says the Lord of hosts that it shall not leave them. It shall, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. We see Sephaniah chapter 3, Sephaniah chapter 3. In Sephaniah chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 11. Chapter 3 of Sephaniah, verse 11, in that day, shall thou, eh, shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings wherein thou hast transgressed against me? For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. Them that rejoice in pride, they celebrate pride. He says, I'll take them away. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also live in the midst of thee and afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. When they see that the proud people, God deals with them, and they're still poor, they say, well, if we're going to have any change in our situation, we need to call upon the name of the Lord. And the remnant of Israel, verse 13, shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Jeremiah chapter 13. Jeremiah chapter 13. The judgment of God coming upon those who are proud. The judgment of God. That will be terrible. And that's why the Lord is saying, as you look at yourself and you see yourself in the mirror of the word of God, repent, turn away, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, that he may bring his glory and his forgiveness upon your life. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 15. It says, Hear ye, and give ear, be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. See the judgment coming upon the proud. And it says, hear and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death. And make it gross darkness. But if you will not hear it. My soul shall weep for you. My soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. And mine eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. It's saying that captive, captivity will come if you will not repent and turn. It says, then I'll be weeping for you in secret because I know God will definitely judge the proud. We come to point number three, the purging and the preservation from pride. Purging and preservation from pride. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Eventually the Lord purged the man. That he is the monarch. That he is Nebuchadnezzar. The Lord purged him and cleansed him from that pride. He realized it eventually. I'm reading from verse 34. Daniel chapter 4, verse 34. And at the edge of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up my eyes unto heaven. And mine understanding returned unto me. 
And I bless the Most High, and I praise and honor Him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and His kingdom from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And He doeth according to His will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And the, for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and my, my and brightness returned unto me. 